Well, hello everybody, this is Dr. Charles C. Lucas, the very proud senior pastor of Promise Land Ministries. Welcome to the broadcast of the Promise Land Ministries Network. And before we get started, guess what? This is the announcement. Yeah, I'm doing them. So check this out now. Share and subscribe before we get started. Share and subscribe, amen. Don't be stingy with the word of God. Hey, you too, Britt. You too, Prophet Campbell. Yeah, come on, Dougie Doug. Come on now. Uh, KF, you at Bedside Baptist. Don't front me, right? And so share and subscribe the word of God, amen. Guess what? T Tasha, Tasha Lucas has been bringing in some stuff. Come on, y'all. Let's go, fam. Share and subscribe. Be proud of your ministry. Amen. Amen. And guess what? The pastor don't the pastor don't uh, 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 don't don't get embarrassed you and I got to bail you out of jail. So hey, guess what now? Yeah, <laughs> go ahead. Don't don't do that now, right? So share and subscribe. Give, right? Give, good, give the fine give, amen. You know, good well, I don't just want to put this money in my pocket. Guess what now? That stuff goes to revivals, it goes to the facilities, it goes to media, it goes to things that you're enjoying that God is blessing in your life, amen. So, guess what? We have a tool right now called Givelify. G I V E L I F Y. And guess what? You're going to go to the Google Store, you're going to go to the Apple Store, and you can get it on your Android or your iPhone. Amen. And when you do that, then do a search for Promise and Ministries Incorporated. And guess what? Peace Street Corners, Georgia. Make sure you put Incorporated at the back of it. Promise and Ministries Incorporated in Peace Street Corners, Georgia. And give. Worship the Lord with your giving. Amen. And guess what? He watches that and He'll bless it. You're being faithful over what God. God is giving you. Okay, next, volunteer. We've got revivals that are going to be coming up in the pipeline. We've always got that. Amen. Volunteer. Volunteer for the parking lot ministry. Volunteer for ushers. Volunteer. Amen. And guess what? God will bless you. Not just give of your substance, but give of the wealth of time that you have. Amen. Even the intercessory team that we are, that we have. Guess what now? You'll be working with Prophet Campbell. And guess what now? Um, give, I mean, uh, give your time and volunteer. If all you can do is pray for someone and you're immobile in your home, guess what? We have a place for you. Amen. Next, Wednesday night Bible study. Yay. And guess what? Now that's 7 p.m. Eastern time on our broadcast. Amen. Come in and get the word of God. You need more than one feeding of the word weekly. Amen. And guess what? We got you. And the Holy Spirit's going to speak to your needs. Holy Spirit's going to speak to your desires. Holy Spirit's going to speak what the Father wants you to do to get you back on track and keep you on track. For I know one thing. I know Promise and Ministries is anointed by God to do his work and to enrich your life. Amen. The Boaz Institute, we are on class what? Six now, cuz. And guess what now? We got ladies in. This is the first all girl, all woman class. And guess what? They are killing it. Amen. So just keep going. Keep your study. And then guess what? Other Boaz team, guess what? Keep working with the tutor. Keep Keep, keep moving. There you go. I like that. Come on now. Keep moving. Amen. Keep moving. This is a game changer for your life. So I need you to stay encouraged in it, right? Stay encouraged because if it was easy, everyone would be doing it. Amen. Guess what? Pray about it before you go. That's what I do before I go to the gym. Pray about, pray over um, your classes. Pray over your study session. Pray over your job interviews. Pray that God anoints your mind. I pray for you daily, but guess what? Come in agreement with the prayer that your pastor's praying over you, uh, men and women of Boaz now. Amen. And guess what? Welcome new members. Hey, we got, you know, we got some new members. Oh, Tasha came through. We got new members now. So welcome. This is your pastor, and I'm going to, I'm going to be with you to, 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 to marry you and bury you. Amen. And so that's what we do. We're hands-on ministry. And welcome here. You're here to receive the word of God. And guess what? This ministry will not disappoint. And guess what now? We say welcome home. And guess what your pastor say? Keep moving. Well, hello, everybody. This is Dr. Charles C. Lucas. I am super excited to be with you this evening. Saying what's up to even baby Addison over there. Hey, look, you know, guess what now? Welcome to another broadcast of the Peachtree Corners, I mean, of, of the Promise Land Ministries Network in beautiful Peachtree Corners, Georgia, right? And you can see me, I'm in my living room. But hey, look, y'all, you know how, you know what's up, right? And so, hey, look, before we get started, y'all already saw the announcements, now. Share and subscribe. Share and subscribe, right? Share and subscribe to broadcast. Why? Because we've been talking about timely topics. topics. Last week, we got out of a series called What, what Your Father Should Have Told You. Amen. And now we're into a series 
called unstuck. Unstuck. What well, getting you unstuck in Christ? What is sticking you? What did God, you know, some of you have promises from God in your entire bloodline, but they have not been realized, right? Some of you, some of you have said, man, I, I was supposed to be singing. I, you know, have you ever have you ever had the funny feeling of, hey, look, you know what? I was meant to do something better than what I'm doing now, greater, supposedly. And guess what? You every you almost take two steps forward or one step forward and two steps back. And we're talking about being unstuck, amen. And so share that with people, share that with your friends, amen. If y'all remember promise and ministry, you guys should be sharing anyway. Ain't that right, Britt? Britt got my back. Come on, Prophet Campbell. I know, come on, Doug. You know, and so guess what? Share, and guess what? Also, give, give. We got an application called Giveify, right? And so give to the ministry. Guess what? Now you don't you download um that from the um from Google Play or the iStore, the Apple Store, and yes, you download Giveify and then look up um Promise and Ministries and Peachtree Corners, Georgia. Promise and Ministries Incorporated, Peachtree Corners, Georgia. We don't want that office going nobody else now. We need this for those uh, those street revivals, y'all like you know, uh Dondre and all y'all know y'all get two plates with the cheeseburgers and the salsa. Yeah, give. Go ahead. <laughs> I gotta I got I love my media team, right, y'all. So I have to, I have to get on my boys. So, so. Yeah, come on, Kevin Kev. You know, give, give, give some, right? Breathe your mouth, give some. And so that's what you do, okay? Amen. And, and so let's go ahead and get into prayer. We've got some exciting stuff to talk about today. We're dealing with the whole overall series is called Unstuck. We're going to spend a few months on this. And guess what? We're talking about generational curses for the next month, okay? Don't be scared. Don't be scared because we're going to get you unstuck. Okay, play Come on, man. All right, let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you. We praise you for the opportunity, Lord, to be able to break bread together. We're honored, Lord God. The Lord, Holy Spirit, you're going to speak to us, Lord, as only you can, Lord. We thank you. We make ourselves available to you. We come against the spirit of distraction and offense, Lord. We ask you to speak um, to us, uh, correct us, edify us, Lord God, encourage us, Lord God, confirm, Lord God, all of you and none of me in Jesus' name. Amen. Hey, look, I would not be y'all pastor unless I, you know, know what we do. Look, you shouldn't be here without your Bible, without your highlighter, without your pen, and without your notepad. Amen? Why? Because guess what? The Bible says, study to show yourself a tool, a workman that needs not be ashamed with rightly dividing the word of truth. Right? And so guess what? You're not going to get everything in this one feeding. You're going to go back over and digest it. I, don't have, I, don't, I, I can't pray more than five minutes. Prayer is not just you talking to God, but it's a dialogue. And a lot of times he wants to speak to you through your notes. Amen. I got notes from years ago. Keep your notes and, and, and study those. Amen. And so you got time, you know, to do that with. Okay. And so so I know you think I'm getting on you, but hey, look, uh, you know what's up. And so guess what? Now, and also, if you don't have your notes, you also have them on the screen. The media team should also have that in a sub drop there, right, of these beautiful slides. You got some brand new stuff. Y'all like that new stuff out there? Hey, I'm trying. We're moving up. Now we're moving up. So guess what I want you to do? This, this series here, a sub-series of the Unstuck series, is called um, Ending Generational Curses Part 1. We talked about that son, Ending Generational Generation Curses Part 1. But this time, it's Bible study. So what I want you to do, get in up, open your Bible, amen, and then turn to turn to Zechariah chapter 3. Turn to Zechariah chapter 3, amen. We're going to get in the word. We're going to turn to Zechariah chapter 3. And we're going to break this down slowly, okay, about what we're talking about when generational curses happen. Amen. And so what we talked about Sunday is that the root of generational curses, yeah, it could be sin. But guess what? You know who the root of it is? The, pro, the, the, guy, the person that provokes you into that is the devil. Why? Because he does not want whatever great is, whatever wealth, whatever supernatural increase is in your bloodline to come out. So what does he do? He gets you in the sin and then he goes back to God and then and then uh, tries to get a judgment against your family. Why? To stop whatever is in your bloodline from coming out, whether it's media, whether it's songs, whether it's, it's other things we talked about. But guess what? Some of the most anointed, talented people in the world are in prison. Why? Because the devil went after them first. Why? So that he didn't get all those songs, all of those plays, all of the, those 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 inventions, all those business things. He, you know, he'd rather have him be a drug dealer than be a CEO, right? He'd rather her be a a a a a, a person that that makes it in Hollywood and makes song and lists songs than to make praise and worship music, 
right? So people don't get saved, repent and be saved, right? And so I'm going to go to the word of God here. I feel the power of God already. That is amazing. So let's go. Y'all come on. All y'all come on now. Yeah, let's go to the word. It says Zechariah chapter three, verse one. And guess what? We This is the church of what? Biblical literacy. So what do we do? We take our time. If you don't know where it is, go to your table of contents. Ain't nothing wrong with that. Go to your table of contents. Amen. Go to your table of contents, right? And so we're going to go to Zechariah chapter three. And guess what? If we're going too fast, you can always rewind it. Amen. Rewind it. Amen. God, look, God is looking for your faithfulness. He's not looking for your perfection. He's looking for your faithfulness. Will you just do it? Will you take, will you take the highlighter and highlight the book? Highlight the Bible. Highlight where it is. Take notes, right? And do that stuff. Amen. Respond to God, the authority with obedience. And then guess what? When you show up and do that and obey, now when you pray and God says, okay, you know what? God, the Bible says, a faithful shall abound in blessings. And so what happens is God will see if you can be faithful with a small thing. Take your notes. Turn to your Bible. Amen. Let's see if you're going to do it. Zechariah chapter 1, chapter 3, verse 1. We talked about this Sunday, but we want to go over it a bit more slowly here. And it says, then he showed me Joshua, the high priest, standing before the angel of the Lord. Right. And we, we talked about Joshua in, the, in that passage. Also says Joshua represents the nation of Israel. You ever notice how people intercess? When you intercede for somebody, what you're doing, you're standing in their place. What we call standing in the gaps. So the priest of Joshua is doing, guess what he's doing? He's standing in the stead of Israel prophetically. He represents it. Matter of fact, yeah, amen. That's what he's doing. He's standing in the place of Israel for the entire nation, right? So you're not going to have 25 million people standing out there. So Joshua does it. And it's a prophetic vision here. And it says, guess what? And guess who shows up? And Satan standing at his right hand to what? Resist him or what? Accuse him. So guess what? This is a scene in the heavenly courts. They're standing before the, the throne of judgment. God is the judge. And, and, and guess what now? And, and Joshua is a defender. And Israel is on trial. And guess who's accusing? Who's pro the prosecutor is? The devil. The Bible says that the devil is the accuser of the brother. And he accuses you what? Day and night. Why is he doing this? When the, the judge trying to say, say he's resist. He's resisting. How is he, what is he resisting? Because God is about to bless and restore Israel. So what the devil does is try to disqualify. You better get. He tries to disqualify you. Amen. Right? He tries to disqualify you. How? Get you in agreement with him. How many times have I missed out on things? Maybe go to death. Uh, I'll tell you this one thing. I'll tell you, when I was going to go get my uh, first new house here in Georgia, paid off. I mean, I was walking up the stairs, going to my house, and the Lord clearly spoke to me. He gave me an image of the enemy. And he was not no... The, 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 the silhouette of Satan. And it was not no other thing. He had a manicured haircut. He was like a rock band thing. I saw the silhouette. You know? And he said, the devil just came before me accusing. He said, you didn't have any sin to stop it. I was like, that, that, I ain't gonna say that's the first one. Ooh, hallelujah. You know? The devil came trying to stop me from getting that house. And he went before God to find little petty stuff to stop it. That's how the devil, the devil can't stop you. What he does is get you to hurt yourself. He can't curse you. The devil don't have a curse to give you the witch curse. The witch can't curse you. All it does, he's trying to find a crack. They're trying to find sin to where you hurt yourself. And so the devil came and on his right hand, ready to resist him. Like in the court, you see the court case, you know what? When you're looking, you're on the left and the, and the prosecution's on the right. And the Lord said to Satan, the Lord rebukes you, Satan. And indeed, the Lord, who has chosen Israel, rebukes you, or, or Jerusalem have rebuked you. Another translation says Israel rebukes you, right? And so he's saying, hey, look, look, you're accusing these people, but I'm about to check you right now. And here's the rebuke. Here's the rebuke. He didn't just rebuke them and leave it. He said, this is why. He says, it's not just bland brand being poked out of the fire. What does that mean? Have they not paid enough for their sins? Some of the generational curses you have been through is because the enemy has tricked your relatives into opening up the door of witchcraft, opening up the door of promiscuity, opening up the door of rebellion. And guess what now? The devil's like, now I can go to God and take that them, and they're going to death disqualify themselves from other stuff. Because he knows that God on his throne is what righteousness 
and justice, but God is righteous too. And so he goes back and accuses. And so what he does is what, why is he doing it? So he can get permission from God to do work his hand in your life. Why do you think the devil got Eve to bite that fruit? So that he could, because he knew it was going to trigger God's judgment against them. And it was going to stop them from ruling and reigning on earth. And by default, it was going to give the devil uh, uh, access. Hey, he could just go to Adam and say, hey, man, could you just uh, get, uh, you know what? Could you just give me, I'm, no, no, he could just go and say, Adam, I'm your God now. I take over now. He don't have authority to do that. Adam has to give it to him. And so a generational curse is pretty much so somebody in your bloodline gave the devil access to you, whether it's from alcoholism to homosexuality to promiscuity to indebtedness to having a nasty attitude to single parent home. Somebody in that the devil tipped them and said, okay, you know, you're going to go ahead and you're going to have this child outside of marriage. And they're thinking of just one. And then all of a sudden now every one of y'all have one divorce and then everybody got it. One person in prison, I told you before Sunday what, what happened. I told you what happened um, um, one time I went to mentor this young man. I was in went to court with him, and this older man was up before the judge first, and they started reading off his charges, and the older man had an attitude and, and said, no, no, this is my son's charge. Generational curse. That, that means that, okay, you know what? Everybody is a single parent. Everybody's on welfare for five generations, four generations. Everybody cuts people out. Everybody cheat on their spouse. Everybody's an alcoholic. That's spiritual. So God has said to the devil, and guess what? When you do that, the devil's grief, the devil's destruction is it's never enough until you die. He doesn't care if you backslide on God and then turn to him. He's like, no, he's going to still kill you. Why? Because he hates you. He's hateful. Amen. And so guess what? We got to understand that. But guess this is the good news here. God understands where you are. That's why he says, get yeah, this is the good news. When God says, it's not this brand being plucked out of fire, what does that mean? I understand where you are. I understand why you do what you do. I understand why you're drinking. I understand why you from promiscuous. I understand there was relatives that came before you were even born that opened up the door to this thing. Now, David said, what? I was shaped in, I was born in sin and shaped in iniquity. He never met, and you're talking about Adam, he never met Adam. God knows, God understands. So we talk about why you're running from God. Why you think God is mad at you? Guess what? You just got to keep come to him and repent. Amen? A generational curse, like Pastor Lucas told you, is guess what? When you feel like you're going one step forward and two steps back, every time I pay one bill, it's another one. Every time I get into a relationship, I find the same type of person. I told y'all, I'm be transparent with you. I, 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 I kept finding violent, angry people because guess what? My mom opened up the door to that generational curse. When she married my father, he was a violent, angry person. And guess what? So that spirit has been rampant. All my siblings had done that. Or a drug addict to somebody abuse, lying. Every last one of us did. Why? Because my mother opened up the door to that curse. Amen. It's a curse. And that spirit now says, I have a legal right because somebody opened it. They never, they never repented and closed that door. Think about that. But guess what? You know why God's mercy comes in? Because God says, I understand. He looks at the devil. When the devil tries to come and say, continue to curse, he says, haven't they suffered enough? They just came out. They don't even know why they're doing it. They don't even know why they're doing that stuff, right? And so the devil knows the nature of God is to bless you. And guess what? He doesn't want to see you blessed because guess why? Because when you do that, that's an open example of the goodness of God in your life. So when he does, he brings in a curse. That A curse is something that is a, a fault, a, a reverse blessing. That means it's, you, you're almost fighting against the wind. Against the, it's, it's like swimming against the current. A generational curse is. Amen. How far would you be if you didn't have that curse? How far would you be if, if that would be the has not this brand been plucked out of fire? I feel the power of God. And now, and, and verse three, now Joshua was clothed with what filthy clothes or filthy garments and standing before the angel of the Lord. This is God's mercy here. The guess what? Now I, I, oh, guess what? If you could just get to God, 
If you can just get to God, the devil's trying to stop you from praying. He's trying to stop you from getting to church because guess what now? He knows that God has so much love that he will restore you no matter what you do. Look at the lady and say, get your butt to God. Get to God. Get to the altar. I'm struggling. I can't find out what my dream is. I don't know why I keep meeting these people. Go to the altar. You can't figure it out. You're wrestling with something with with, with willpower that, that is a demonic force that only God can break. Go to God. And so guess what now? Jacob goes before the throne of God and he begs his mercy. And guess what happens now? God says, okay, look, he says, okay, this is your current state. I have filthy clothes and stand before the angel of the Lord. And guess what now? And he spake, who spake? And he spake, and he spoke, who spoke? And he spoke, who spoke? God spoke. Only God has the power to speak right now. He has the final judgment. He spoke and said to those who were standing before him, who? God. Remove the garments from him. Look at that. I understand you. Give them all godly spouse. I understand you. Heal their body. I understand you. Get out of drugs. I understand what happened. Still heal her heart. Yeah, she's not mean. She got her, she, her, her feelings have been hurt. Her heart has been broken. And people think she's mean. She's not over what she's medicating with food. He's not just an addict, but he's been molested before. And God understands here. And so God speaks. Remove the 50 garments from him. And guess what? That 50 garment could be your bad reputation. It could be the scars from your prison sentence. It could be some sexual addiction that you're into. It could be drugs. It could be temper. It could be a, abandonment. It could be just rebellion and stubbornness. Guess what? We all have filthy garments. But guess what? God understands, one, where you got it from, where it started. And guess what? He has enough compassion to remove it, and he has the authority to remove it. Look at how quick he does this here. Look at how quick he does it here. And he spoke and said, remove those garments. Uh, 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 uh. Those who stand before him, remove the filthy garments from him. And again, he said to him, see, I have taken what your iniquity from you. What does that mean? I took your sin from you. I forgave you for it. The devil is trying to come here and accuse you of it because that's the only thing that's going to stop me from doing what I want to do. So God says, because I want to do this so bad, I'm going to remove it. I'm going to remove the sin. I'm going to remove that bad habit. I'm going to remove those bad people out of your life. You can't do it, so I'll do it. I, you better thank God for the close doors. You better thank God for the times that, that those people left you. You better thank God for the times that God removed them. And you still crying because they're not here. But guess what now? God moved them out the way because guess what now? There was a stumbling block in your life. You better thank God for that. You better thank God that joker left you. You better, uh, you better thank God that girl was spending all your money wrecking your car. You better Thank God she gone. You over here singing a country song. You better be saying hallelujah. That God removed. You. you wouldn't have that company if God had removed something. You wouldn't have that new house if God had removed the person that couldn't pay the rent. You wouldn't have that new car if the other one wouldn't break it down. You wouldn't have the ministries you had unless they cut up at church. Thank God for the things he removes. And so a lot of you are trying to fight. You know what? I, 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 Ecclesiastes says this. There is a time, guess what, to have, but there's a time to take away. There's a time to live. There's a time to heal. And guess what now? You're trying to hold on to the thing that's killing you. God's got to remove that to get something else there. And you mad, but guess what? God got to take away that old stuff before he can bring the new stuff in. I'm talking to somebody whose world is burning down around them, who's where they're crying and they're mad and they don't trust God anymore. They ain't fear God has done so much to you. He's, too, he's been too good to you now to, to turn your back and then get worried about him forsaking you now. Every time things go well, you hallelujah, it's God. You're speaking in tongues, but all of a sudden when something go bad, you get to worry. You get to trying to take a shortcut, but you got to understand that the same God that got you through it is going to get you through it. He removed those clothes. And I preach Sunday now. I ain't going to talk to y'all. ain't going to rev me up, Britt. You better calm down. Because mm -mm. mm -mm. this got to be rebroadcast. I don't want the world thinking I'm crazy now. You know, I get it now. You know, but no, no, I'm holding, I'm holding the forces back. God removed. 
Thank God. How many times do we give God glory for removing stuff out of our life? How many times do we give God glory for stripping us? We keep blaming the devil like he's got, like if the devil did it, God's going to turn it around. God is good. Remove the garments from me. Remove the garments from me. Some of us are fighting over the straps and God wants to give you a new meal. Remove the garments from him. Remove the job from him. Remove the old car from him. Remove the old uh, living boyfriend from him and get her ready for a husband. Remove that lady from him that didn't need no good so he can prepare him for a wife. Remove him from that job. He's been trying to be a CEO for so long now. Tighten that job up and, and move him out the way so I can get him something else. And God, look at how faith he says in the last part. He says, see, I've taken away your iniquity from you and will clothe you with what? Festive robes. Guess what? Get the revelation. You, you going through this for a reason. I, I'm gone. I'm cool. Because I got people watching. So I got it. I got it. You going through this for a reason. You lost this for a reason. You lost that for a reason. And you trying, you better thank God. Some of that stuff is getting stripped for a reason. You better rejoice because God is getting you ready for something else. Well, how could God put the robes on top of the filthy stuff? Jesus even said, what did he say? He said, guess what now? If I can't put new wine in old wine skin because the wine skin will burst and then the wine skin is gone and the wine will go run out of it too. Look at, look at your name and say, God is removing to replace. He's removing them treacherous backsliding friends so you can have some faithful friends. I will close with press and close. Then, then verse five is where we're going to leave it. Then I said, let them put a clean hat on his head. So they put a clean hat on his head or turban on his head and clothed him with garments while the angel of the Lord was what? Standing by. He will prepare a table for you in the what? Presence of your enemies. You got, I feel that I see in the spirit. Some of y'all came to service today, Lent. God going to turn that lip into a run. But guess what? You're limping. He's trying to get you tired. He, some of you are literally trying to hold on to the thing God trying to rip out of your hands. Some of the stuff you think you need is killing you. You're trying to fix it. And God's trying to replace it. What do you do when you're trying to fix something that God's trying to replace? Amen. What are we trying to do here? What, what do we do? We have to realize that when you're dealing with generational curses, you suffered. The Holy Spirit tells me you suffered enough. You suffered enough. It's time to come to the altar. Allow God to do what you can't do. You've tried rehab programs, you've tried. Well, step program, you gotta look, 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 repeat after me. God, I trust you. And go to the altar and leave it there. And even when the urge comes back, guess what now? God, I give it to you. And you might slip and get back up. God, I trust you. Amen. God knows your journey. God knows that you didn't just wake up like that. God knows what happened to open those doors. He's ready to heal them. Amen. This is a short Bible study, and I'm glad. I ain't gonna lie to you, cause y'all, 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 y'all draw it out of me on Sunday, ain't it? Guess what? The first generational curse that you should be that this you that you should but be be submitted to breaking is the curse of sin. What did David say again? I was shaped in it. I was born in sin and shaped in it. But he got that from the fall of Adam, ain't it? And guess what? How do I break that? God has already done it for you. You gotta show up. Why at the altar? You got to show how do you do that? Show up by confessing that you are a sinner, that you need help. And that that's God's the only one that can fix it. Amen. Repeat after me. Heavenly Father, I come to you as a sinner. I confess that Jesus is Lord. And I believe that you raised him from the dead. Lord Jesus, come into my heart. 
fill me with the Holy Spirit and make me a new person. And I will serve you all the days of my life. In Jesus' name, amen. Look, y'all already know, if you prayed that prayer, you just broke the biggest generational curse ever by just coming in agreement with God. He sent Jesus Christ to break the curse of sin. Because the Bible says, cursed is any man who hangs from a tree. Amen. That's why the clan used to do it. Jesus hung from a tree called a cross. And he paid that same for you. Guess what? The Bible says when you pray that prayer made up in your heart, that you are saved now. And guess what? It also says, and guess what? The angels in heaven rejoice over one soul that repents. They have a party in heaven for you. And guess what? If you're crying right now, stop. Let it flow. Stop wiping it. Let that stuff go. God is cleansing your spirit. And it's 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 being a bomb. And that shows that the, the Holy Spirit is being poured in when you begin to cry. He's pouring into you. Let him do it. Lift your hands and just. Just kneel down and let take your time and let it process. Don't rush it. Amen. Let it cleanse you. We, we, we. Let it all out. We, we. Let it all out and let it all in. Amen. Look, if you don't have a Bible, you need to write the broadcast. If you can't afford a Bible, we'll get you one. We've overnighted. We sent those, we sent Bibles to other countries before. We'll get your Bible if you don't have it. You need a Bible as a new Christian. And begin to read. The Psalms and 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 the New Testament, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Media team, I'll put that up. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Read that. And then also watch the broadcast at 10, 10 a.m. Eastern every Sunday. Come by our campus at 107 Technology Parkway in Petrie Cornish, Georgia. Right? And guess what? The zip code is 30092. Amen. You can rewind it. Then also watch our broadcast also 7 p.m. Eastern time. Every Wednesday, amen. God is pleased with you. And guess what we're going to do? We're going to disciple you. Discipleship, discipling is not a very heavy word. It just means teach you how to live this Christian life, amen. A biblical life. So it's going to be pleasing to God and he's going to grow you, amen. I love you. I'd love to be your pastor. So write, write the broadcast. Let us know you gave your life to Christ, amen. And you're a member of Palmer St. Ministries now. You roll with us now. That's good. Amen. Let's go ahead and pray. I'm going to see you Sunday to continue this series on unstuck and unstuck. And we're going to continue focusing on the generational persons. Amen. Heavenly Father, we thank you. We praise you. Lord God, as their pastor, I speak, Lord. Peace, Lord God. Just, Father God, let the tears not be of guilt and condemnation. I come against the spirit of guilt and condemnation. Satan, you are the accuser of the brother. But where Jesus is, he brings life, he brings liberty. We thank you, Lord. We, I lift that spirit of heaviness right now. I come against our bind right now. I bind that spirit of guilt and condemnation. And I thank you that I release joy, the joy of the Lord into the into the audience, into the congregation today, Lord. Father, I ask you to heal them. Lord God, I thank you that you meet people where they are, Lord God, and walk them to the altar, Lord God. For I know that you will forgive them of their sins, cleanse them of their iniquity, Lord God, and heal them and restore them, Lord. Thank you for joy this week. Thank you for open doors of favor and blessing. And I close the doors on generational curses. Thank you for exposing the errors that, have, that, that, that we struggle in, whether generational curses, Lord God, and give us the right prayers to pray to get delivered from them. In Jesus' name, amen. Hey, look, y'all, this is your pastor, Dr. Charles C. Lucas, Senior Pastor, Palm Center Minister, saying what? Keep moving. Come on, Addison. You know what we do? Keep moving.